We sell dreams. We have an ambition, and not a small one. We want to be the first commercial Belgian brand to have international success. We want to dress your emotions. We want to battle boredom. We want to butterfly you. We have big dreams. We want a big thing. It's not always be like this. We know what we want, but it wasn't like this. So let me take you back to the beginning. I've always been a woman without a mission, without a plan. I wanted to, la to be life, to be easy, fun, not too hard to work, earn quick money, traveling. So in between my modeling, I started traveling. I lived in India, I lived in South Africa, and then I met my husband, Esfandiar Ektisadi, who was born into fashion. He's the son of a very well-known Belgian fashion designer, Nicole Cadin, and he was literally raised in the fashion factories and in the shops. So we met, and it was 2000, and we had a plan, a big plan. We wanted to make a small collection of four T-shirts with in a lot of colors. A plan, but no money. But we had luck. We had a very nice Turkish supplier who told us, you know what, guys? You make the collection, you sell it, your clients pay, and then you pay us. We've always had that luck through our career. We had this sparkle of luck. So we started selling in the apartment. I went on the road, I did the prospection, my husband was selling and mostly seducing the female customers in our <laughs> office because I'm a very handsome and sexy husband, that's always easy. <laughs> and in fact, we conquered the Belgian fashion market quite easy because you have to remember in the 90s, the fashion was gray, was a little bit boring, black, white, very, very calm, and suddenly we were there with this sparkle of colors, with these combinations of prints and fabrics, and we seduced the people. I think there was really a demand for this extravagance at that moment. And within one year, we went from a collection from four pieces to a full collection, because the clients demanded us, why don't you do a sweater, why don't you dress? And suddenly our collection was a full collection. And I remember being on the Belgian fair, and there was a French agent coming by, and she told us, we really want to represent you in Paris. Why don't you come? So we went to Paris as tourists. We had these little hooks from Ikea, put it on the wall, showed our clothes on there, and we had this color in this mass of gray. And within the first five minutes, a client came in. This was a client from Dubai who came on the fair, and she said, can we buy the collection? And we were like, oh, yes, yeah, sure. And we had to call friends who came to help us at the fair. We, was, we were writing orders on the ground because we didn't have shares enough. And it's still a highlight of our career because I think at that moment we realized that people didn't buy because they liked us or they thought we were sympathetic or but because they like the product. And it's still something when I remember, something that's for me very touching. I, I still think it was one of the greatest moments to, to know that people loved our product. We opened our first shop, which was also very, very lucky because it was a new complex in Antwerp and there were 400 demands and seven shops. And it was a lottery and we won. So again, this luck came into our life. 2004, 2005, it was the birth of the men's collection, but also the birth of my two sons. There was a really thin line between private and work. It was tough, it went fast, it was fun. I remember us living in the office at that moment with a baby of three days, because after maternity hospital four days, I went directly to work, of course. What else to do? And I wanted to be the perfectionist. I wanted to be the perfect mother. I wanted to be the perfect businesswoman, the perfect wife. And it became really, really tough. I remember traveling from Paris and Milan with a baby of one or two weeks, a nanny calling me from, he's hungry, what to do? Come to Harvey Nichols. I'm at the second floor. I breastfeed it in the changing rooms, on the fairs, in the factories. 2004, 
everybody saw my breast in the fashion world at that moment. It's, it went so quickly. We had suddenly 3,000 wholesale clients, 70 agents, a turnover of 50 million. Our life was a complete rush, no looking back. Pure, pure chaos, exciting, fun. Everything we did, we did with a gut feeling. We sold at the world. We were like a speed train without a destination. But we didn't have a strategy. No structure. Nothing. Crisis came. Disaster. Multi-brands were very, very careful and selective. A lot of them went broke. But the worst of all, we didn't have an image anymore. We had lost our image. We had lost our DNA. We had sold at so many people. We had wanted to please so many people. We had made so much compromises that a collection that once was so strong didn't, didn't have any DNA anymore. It didn't look like a collection anymore. What to do? Our revenue went from 50 to 25. Where were we? What to do? We needed somebody to help us. We needed somebody to solve this problem and to find a structure in this complete, complete chaos. But we needed somebody strong with a gut feeling because at the end, fashion is no mathematics, it's emotion. So 2010, Stéphane Hulin came into the office and he asked me, what's your mission, vision, value? And I was like, what? He said, who are your competitors? No idea. And suddenly we realized that we didn't know who we were. We didn't know what we wanted and we didn't have a clue. HR, one-to-one -one talks, never heard about it. I did my interviews and I hired my people at the cafe and in the bars. It was like this. So we needed to find a solution. We needed to learn from our mistakes. And that started. A big, long road started. Permanent questioning, also in good times, always thinking ahead. Challenge yourself. There is no status quo. Keep surprising, innovating, especially in fashion. We don't mind. We really, really, really stimulate exotic and wild ideas in fashion. Surround yourself with young people. At a certain moment, we grew old with our, with our customers. What is the worst in fashion? You have to be surrounded by young people with strong goals. We increase the importance of accessories. That's why you can get in fashion the young people back. It's cheaper, you can go bold, you can go exciting. You don't need to be commercial with accessories. And passion. Everything I undertake, I do with passion. And I demand it of the people next to me. They have to be loyal, hard work, passionate. I don't care, honestly, about degrees. I think I select people on character and attitude. I'm a control freak on image. I'm not giving this out of my way. You cannot. You have, your message has to be your own and it needs to be clear. Retail shops, so important. When you walk into a shop, you walk into the world of a label. So we needed to concentrate on shops. For the moment, we have 28 shops in Belgium, seven in Korea, two in Dubai, three in France, and one in Swiss. We want to sell no products. We don't sell products, we sell dreams. And I think in fashion, certainly for the moment, it's important to sell dreams. Also, the market is changing constantly. The clients want new things. They want it quick. This is social media and internet doing. We need to go alone. Instead of two collections, we need to offer eight collections. We have three collections, flash collections, capsule collections. We don't stop. That's what the market demands. E-commerce, a huge booming market. We had to jump on this train. We have now a team of 10 persons doing Facebook, Twitter, e-commerce, social media, you name it. And my biggest lesson, I think, is less is more. You have constantly to downsize everything. We don't have 600 pieces in a collection anymore. We have 200. 
the 3,000 wholesale clients, the thousand best one you have to select. 70, 70 agents went to 10 agents, but they go for it. We're not that speed train anymore. We are a bulldozer, but a bulldozer with a structure and a strategy. In fact, all those figures, they're not the most important thing. We survived. I survived with behind me a perfect team, young people with a goal and a passion. And the most important, every morning when I go and walk into that office, I'm still as passionate and happy as I was 15 years ago. My home, it's my second home, my office. My team is my family, and I'm a lucky, happy woman who made for my passion my job together with a husband I like very much. I love very much. Thank you.